Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining to my presentation about developing .NET applications for Microsoft Teams at the Microsoft 365 Virtual Marathon. I hope that you are enjoying this event and learning a lot of uh, useful stuff from, from our great presenters. My name is Luis Beltran and let's get started. Before that, an important announcement. Mark your calendars for the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference, which is happening uh, next year in Las Vegas, Nevada. Also, thank you very much to all our sponsors, because without them, it wouldn't be possible to run this uh, huge event. OK, so please allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I am Mexican, currently living in Czech Republic. Uh, why? Because I am uh, doing research and studying at Thomas Mathe University in Slin. And also a Microsoft MVP in artificial intelligence and developer technologies. And I enjoy developing mobile applications, working with cloud technology such as Azure, and implementing AI-driven solutions. You can contact me in the email that is there if you want, if I can help you somehow with this technology. So let's go to our topic. You know that these days the Microsoft Teams platform has been uh, very useful. It, it allows you to build experiences that people usually love. Um, we use Teams as a platform for communication through chat, setting up meetings, on even, and even calling people. But this platform is more than that. It also allows you to collaborate, to work with your teammates with confidence, trusting that uh, Microsoft secures the communications and everything is data compliance and it's manageable. But one important aspect of this platform is, is that you can customize it and extend it by introducing third party applications that you just install in your team and everyone is allowed to use it. So this means that you can gain context without switching context. Yes, because your application or other third party applications will be inside teams. You can meet people where they are. No need to switch context. But did you know that you can develop your own applications and install it for your team? So that's our main topic that we will be talking. And of course, these applications that uh, we develop and install for our team, we can also invite ISVs, partners or enterprise to collaborate, to join uh, part of our team and also use these uh, applications. So this allows uh, a lot of possibilities that um, we can do with uh, developing uh, applications for, for our team. Uh, in regard of this, you can build applications that empower your users in chats, channels, and also your personal workspace. You can create applications that make use of tabs, the main essence of these applications are bots, uh, usually chat bots, but you can uh, develop po more powerful bots or applications. You can use extensions in the form of cards, rich cards, which of course improve the communication or allows uh, users to do much more things than just a chat. You can also notify your users when something is happening. 
you can add rich interactions with your users by the adaptive or connector cards. And of course, you can also include voice and video functions or calling. And these applications can be distributed to your own team or to uh, external users. Of course, um, by adding some uh, rights, so the external, use, external users are allowed to do only some uh, things. And of course, you can connect it with Microsoft Graph in order to improve uh, productivity or access uh, files, for instance, inside your team. We will talk a bit about it. So building applications involves several uh, elements. Um, let's uh, go to each of one. The first one is um, about the development and also the publication in App Studio. So what kind of application we are going to develop? Well, we will usually decide on use cases depending on our needs, depending on business processes or workflows, is the functionality that we are going to introduce in our application. And of course, uh, we can tailor or create applications for different uh, departments or aimed to specific uh, employees or resources. And we can also um, use uh, productivity tools in, in our applications. Of course, we can also determine which context or which um, scope, what the scope your bot or your application is going to be contained. So you can create an application that only you, only a person, only individuals can uh, interact with. For instance, if you want to create a bot that tells you the tasks that are assigned to you. But you can also have another scope such as chat, which means that it can exist in a, uh, let's say, group setting. Of course, it will be a one to one uh, collaboration. But the scope is greater than personal and you can also ena enable a bot that interacts with all the all the team, all the channel. So that that will be the bigger scope. In order to create these applications, we have two possibilities. One is using code. Second one, no code is needed. The second one uses Q&A Maker. But in this specific session, we will be talking about uh, coding or developing the application. So the essence or, of, of this is bot framework. Bot framework um, covers a lot of uh, AI platform from Microsoft. We will be talking about devices, channels, even cognitive services, and also obtaining information from databases or knowledge sources. So, what framework? It's an SDK that is available in C Sharp, Java, Python and also Node.js. It allows us to create applications that can interact with our users. We can connect our code with even third party services. Maybe we have an API for obtaining information such as maybe weather information or uh, we connect it to our database to extract uh, information and ask, sorry, and answer uh, users' questions. So this code, this this uh, this application that we create with both framework, we can make it available to our users in, on Teams uh, by publishing it. But more on that uh, on on a second. So. 
Okay, Bot Framework is a platform that we are going to use to create applications in any of the languages that I just mentioned. Of course, this SDK is free, it's actually open source, and it's uh, continuously, continuously improving. Uh, right now, it's in version 4.9. And we can just install an extension in Visual Studio and we will be able to create uh, this kind of applications, these uh, bots. Uh, in, in the second slide, in second part, sorry, you can see Python code for, for this bot, but usually, well, or at least me, uh, I use uh, C Sharp and yeah, I will talk about .NET for C Sharp. So um, you will see in the demo how this code interacts, how this parts uh, understand our uh, users' uh, messages. But when we are developing our bot, we need to test it. So the bot emulator is another uh, important part of the bot framework platform. The bot emulator is a desktop, a desktop application that allows us developers to test and debug bots either locally or remotely. So we can chat with our bot, even if we haven't uh, published to, to a channel, to, to Teams, for instance. So this is an important element. If you are developing, if you are testing, if you are checking what is working, what is not, yes. Or maybe you already have uh, your application published on Teams, but you can create a new version. You can test it locally before uh, publishing or updating it again. And of course, it is available in different platforms such as Linux, OS X for Mac users and Windows. And this is the, the interface, but we, you will see it live in, on the demo. But as you can see, it's just uh, an application where you can uh, have a conversation with your bot. And you type message, a message and the bot replies to you. Of course, this depends on how you program it or what code did you Add, you added. Another uh, great element that you should consider when you are developing a bot is the language understanding intelligence service, which is also called LUIS. This service is a machine learning environment. It's actually a website, LUIS.ai, where you can train. Um, a language understanding model. You will provide uh, examples or utterances. And in these examples, you will identify the intention or intent and entities or important elements from these sentences. For instance, if you have this utterance, I would like a medium pizza with extra mushrooms and like sausage, but remove the cheese. This is an example, and you could identify important elements such as uh, maybe pizza would be a product, or mushrooms would be topping, sausage, sausage, I mean, oh, oh sorry, also topping. And you can identify important elements from these uh, samples, sample messages that your users uh, normally would uh, say when they want to order a pizza or when they want to yes, uh, buy a pizza or order a pizza. It can be as simple as I would like a pizza and then since no more elements such as toppings or ingredients are included, you can ask yes but it can be also as complete as these sentences. So here you provide these utterances. Uh, this is for the intent, okay, modify order, but th this could be other intents. And at the end, you will train the model. So the bot will learn, okay, these are some ways that uh, the users will say for specific actions. 
and it will learn. Um, it, it can learn from from new instances, or it can uh, detect important, uh, let's say, entities from new samples or from new um, sentences. Okay, you you will also see it like in the demo part, but this is uh, useful if you want to add more functionality or if you want to uh, make your bot smarter. Okay, basically. As you can see, this is, this would be, let's say, like the summary. <laughs> you have a sentence when those flight 234 from Chicago to London depart and this uh, sentence, maybe you train the model for the flight departure intent. This is the aim of this sentence. And you can identify, or in this case, the model it identifies, okay, flight 234 is a flight name, Chicago is a city, but in this case, the purpose of this city is the origin or the source of, of this flight, and London is the destination. Of course, you train this uh, model to understand these structures. So after you write your code, after you add Luis or even other cognitive services, for instance, you can add face API to detect um, faces or to detect people. Yes. Uh, after you have your vote, you can publish it to Azure. And basically, this is a web application bot. You can create a resource in, in Azure. And after you publish or you use the sample project that uh, is created when you, uh, let's say, set up this resource on Azure, you can even test it uh, on, on the online. Yes, on, on, on Azure, but there are also other functionalities included in the web app about resource. For instance, channels built to download the source code of your bot. You can also add access control for roles or authentication or security. You can add some settings and you can also um, yeah, do, do other stuff such as adding speech capabilities. But this web app bot resource allows you also to test. So even if you didn't use the emulate, bot emulator, you can also test it here. But the most important thing, of course, is that your code or your project can be deployed to different channels. Of course, we will be focusing on teams but your same code, your same boat can also appear in Skype or Mes Facebook Messenger, Telegram, Twilio. Mm. The only difference is that you need to set up uh, different uh, settings uh, such as uh, the ID project. In, in, if you are deploying to a Facebook uh, Messenger, you need to create a Facebook application on the Facebook developer website. And you get uh, some uh, settings that you need to add or input uh, in the in, here in the Azure platform to set a connection between Facebook platform and also Teams platform. Sorry, uh, Azure platform. In Teams, you don't need to set up anything. Just add, click, uh, accept the terms of service and that's it. But for others, you might need to um, add some uh, connection strings. You, you would say that they are connection strings. But of course, this is not difficult, just configuration. You don't need to add extra code. So basically, this is the summary of the steps that we just um, talked about. First, you design your code, you code your boat using bot framework SDK. You build it 
you integrate uh, or add intelligence with cognitive services, mainly Luis, but you can also add other capabilities such as Q&A maker, speech, face, API, and so on. You can test it using Bot Emulator. You then publish it to the Azure Web App Bot infrastructure, and then you connect it to several channels, as I, we just explained. After you connect it, yes, it will be available uh, to for, let's say, uh, integration in, in Teams. And regardless of the channel, this should this this uh, bot or this application should be in continuous evaluation. This is a process that doesn't stop because um, your users might want more functionality or might want to try uh, some uh, cases that you didn't add, let's say, for instance, at the beginning when you were adding the Luis uh, utterances and the bot doesn't understand. So you need to improve your, your bot. It's just like any other application that starts from something very basic and then improves over the time. So let's uh, take uh, a bit back to, to this. Let's say that in our web app bot in Azure, we set up the Teams uh, channel. So now on Teams, we need to add the App Studio application that uh, allows us to integrate the, the bot. It's actually just uh, quite easy because with this application, App Studio, which you just install from the Teams Marketplace, you just need to register your, your application, your bot, uh, you need um, uh, an app ID, but this app ID is available from Azure, from the settings of, of your project. You also need to add a name. Uh, you are basically creating something which is called manifest of, of your application. And then your bot will be available for, you, for your users. You will see it, you will see it in a second in, in, your, in the demo, okay? <laughs> but what else you can do uh, after you have a basic, uh, let's say, version of your bot. Well, you can connect your service with other, uh, let's say, elements. Yes, you can integrate uh, to have a conversation, one-to-one uh, -one kind of conversations. You can um, increase the functionality to mention users or also add uh, command bar extensions. You can even integrate existing web contact content via a tab, uh, and you can extend this uh, functionality by using the JavaScript SDK. This is, let's say, uh, apart from, from, from your bot, but yes, you can also integrate both functionalities. One important element, so your users doesn't, don't see only text, is to add uh, adaptive cards support to enrich your conversations. So when you add buttons or images, this with this will add more, let's say, humanity <laughs> to to your conversations, and you will get uh, more details and let's say the user experience is improved rather than only seeing text, these buttons um, perform, uh, sorry, optimize the interaction between the bot and the users. And they don't need to type every, everything. They can just click and they can perform other tasks. One important uh, thing to mention here is that you can have this experience either by using the application, the desktop application, but also on Android and iOS version of Teams, uh, they will get the same user experience. So yes, uh, it's not a limit, which is important. And also you can 
add or use the SharePoint, SharePoint framework for your Teams uh, tabs. So you can add, um, let's say, you can host your calls, uh, add a website or files or other, um, let's say, function, functions here. I haven't used it personally. I'm not SharePoint uh, user, but I know it's possible. And also, you can interact or add graph to automate team life cycles. Graph is a very powerful, um, let's say, API to obtain information from your org organization. You can, um, let's say, interact with your OneDrive uh, workspace, for instance, or you can create new files in Excel. You can also allow only authenticated users to, to use to, to interact with your applications. So you can integrate Azure Active Directory, for instance. You can also obtain information from your calendar, from your email. You can, you, you can do a lot of things thanks to Graph, which is a developer, let's say, platform to obtain information or also uh, create uh, new elements from different uh, parts of Office 365 or Windows 10 or in other uh, parts such as enterprise and mobility. So if in the case of Teams, yes, you can also create new channels or get information from your tabs, from messages. Maybe you would like to create a backup of your messages and store it as a, a Word document on, on one, in OneDrive. Yes, that is possible. So, yeah, you can um, set up your team. You can improve the collaboration. And uh, yeah, the, the scenario that I just mentioned, you can read some channel messages and Maybe you would like to dispose of, of, of this team because it was temporary, so you can arch, arch, archive this uh, team, archive this, this team, and that's it. But you would like to create a backup of the information that was generated uh, for, for the meeting or for the event. And this is maybe <laughs> important for developers, what you can do uh, in regards of team, Teams Graph APIs. Yeah, you can um, uh, create things or delete them, query information from a user. You can post a message uh, on behalf of a user in, in the channel by using an application, for instance, or by, by calling this uh, message resource from Graph. So you can um, even send messages be without being inside teams you can create another kind of application so yes this is possible and you can also integrate voice and video to improve the communications so going back again to our graph uh, platform that we love another important element here is that yes you can schedule uh, voice meetings, you can record the video or you can control the calling and even integrate cognitive services. For instance, to for detecting who is the person who is talking or and you can also, of course, uh, obtain uh, insights and analytics from this uh, meeting, from this conversation. You can automate, uh, obtain data from your conversations. If we talk specifically about the programmable and voice and video communication, yeah, you can even add uh, the bot or the application inside the, the meeting to enhance 
the experience. And you can also uh, interact with other applications to maybe record the, the video or a specific part of, of the video of the call. Yes, that, that is possible. So yeah, you, you can create uh, schedules on by, by writing some code or by creating an, an application. You can obtain um, important information for, from this meeting, for instance, if you create an application that interacts with the computer vision cognitive service, you can describe what is happening in the video call. You can extract this text and maybe store it in a database for analysis later. OK, what happened in this conversation, in this video call? Besides, you can even obtain all the text. You can convert the speech or, or the, all the audio into text and uh, later uh, obtain this, uh, let's say, content or subtitles from, from your conversation. You can translate it to other languages. That is possible thanks to the cognitive services. And well, in regard with uh, call control, again with the graph API, well, yeah, there are several uh, functions that you can have there, you can have a bot, for instance, uh, receiving a call, answering, or transferring to another user, or maybe even finish it, hang up. <laughs> you can add participants to an ongoing meeting. You can mute someone by the application, and you can capture the audio, and yeah, it is quite powerful, this uh, API. And finally, when you are creating your, after you create your application and after you integrate all your services, as I said, yes, you can publish it. You can publish in your internal tenant app catalog, but also you can distribute it uh, and submit it to the Teams app store to distribute it for free, or you can even monetize it. You can sell your application if it can be useful for other teams. That is that is possible. Everything, of course, is managed by the Office 365 admin portal, which means that if you are the admin, you can set up some permissions or policies to your users. So specific users are allowed to install or set up applications and other users will just, uh, um, yeah, they, they can communicate with this bot, with these applications, but they cannot install new applications, for instance. You can also sideload the, the application to specific individuals, and you can also gain insights of how your users are, use, are interacting with the uh, application. Okay. So I think that's enough theory. Let's go to the demo. For this uh, demo, I will show you, uh, let's say, this, this is a scenario. We have, of course, a, a Teams channel that is interacting with a bot. Uh, this bot, let's say, um, it is basically an Azure app service. Yes, it is exposed uh, as this, but in, in Azure, yeah, we, we call it the bot, but mm, on behind, behind the curtain, you have an uh, Azure app service. OK, so your bot or this bot will communicate with uh, Luis model in order to understand users' uh, messages. In this case, it, it is about a product, the, the user would like to get information about a product. So this is understood by the Luis model and it extracts the name of this product. So uh, with this message or this product name, it goes 
and uh, makes a query to the Azure SQL database through a web API. The web API is another app service. So let's uh, see it uh, live. So I just need to connect to my other computer. So please give me a second. <laughs> While I uh, connect it, and you will see it. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, another computer where I have my teams uh, set up. Let's go to this uh, bot. This is the bot that I created. I, I will show you, uh, let's say, all the all the internals. But in this case, uh, this bot starts the conversation by showing this message. Welcome to this uh, company bot. You can find information about product or employee. Okay, only product actually. <laughs> and you have this button. This button uh, actually opens uh, a website. In this case, it's just my blog. But this is uh, just a sample, let's say, uh, function yes, that you can do here. And I can um, type a message to my bot. I want to buy, uh, for instance, I want to buy a bicycle. So um, I type this. OK. Yes. OK, yes, uh, the conversation was just restarted. Sorry. <laughs> um, Let's let's try another thing. Um, I want to buy just that. Uh -huh. So this bot understood. Yes, okay. You want to buy? Uh, what product do you need? I didn't say the the name of the product. Okay, uh, I could type all to see the whole list or the product name. So I will start with maybe bicycle just on that and. It will check the, the database and it should yeah, show this message, typing message. And this is the uh, product that was obtained from this um, conversation or, or from this information. I will I can try again like OK, I want to buy or uh, maybe something different. Um, Mm, maybe I would like to know about products. Okay, let's see if it understands. Yes, what product do you need? You you will see that I don't have this message, but it understood that you are referring to products. Okay, so what product do you need? In this case, now I will type all and okay. It is extracting the information from the database. And in this case, this is a set of um, elements. This is this is actually a card that I mentioned during the um, presentation. I can move through the items that were returned. You could see you can see the product name, also the price and just small description. And but also uh, let's uh, maybe um, check this uh, example. Um, can you give me any details about maybe uh, television? Let's try this. OK. Yeah, the difference here is that with this message, I already uh, mentioned the product, so it is not asking me for 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 this uh, name because yeah, I already provided it in the previous conversation. I just said OK about products. I didn't mention a specific one. 
uh, neither here in this uh, or neither nor uh, in the first one that like yeah, I just want to buy and buy and that's it. So yes, it can detect this kind of uh, information. So how this uh, bot uh, was added to Teams? Okay, I mentioned now I will go, let's say, from these Teams to the uh, internal elements. Um, here I added this uh, application from App Studio. You can see here in the manifest editor, I can import an existing application. Well, yeah, uh, it's uh, this one, company bot. And this company bot, if I, okay, yeah, in the app details, I, I just say the name, just some app ID. It's like uh, publishing uh, an application, of course, like for the Android or Apple store. If you are, you have developed that. Yes, so you uh, set up some information about privacy, terms of use, some icon. The important thing here is the bot. Uh, we can create a new one or connect to an, an existing bot. This ID, I obtained it from the Azure portal. You will see it in a minute. And this is also the scope. It can be used uh, in personal conversations, through the channels, and also in a group chat with uh, many other members. Um, so we can now maybe Okay, yeah, well, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, M maybe now we can check uh, Azure. Yes, this is the resource group that I created, and you can see several uh, examples here. Um, so the first one that I could mention would be maybe the bot. Yes, this is the web app bot service that I uh, talk during the presentation. Um, I have this uh, test in web chat and you would see the start of a conversation. You will see the initial message, this one. Uh, it's the same functionality that I have on Teams, but of course this is for testing. I want to buy. Is that? And you see, yeah, it is more or less this, also the same user experience. You see here the same list of products. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is the channels. You can see, okay, these are the channels that are connected for this bot. Uh, web chat, web chat is uh, for testing, um, but also you can integrate this bot in a website. If you have your website, you can. Uh, copy this HTML code iframe and just uh, get the secret, one of these for instance, and you will have this, let's say, box and it will appear for your users. Yes, you, you can also deploy it to, to for a website, but uh, for, for our talk, of course, it is important, uh, sorry, the channels, uh, I also added teams. Yes, uh, and in this case for Teams, I don't need to do anything. Just select, okay, which type of Teams I would like to use, commercial or for government, or other applications, uh, channels, such as uh, Facebook Messenger that I also uh, mentioned during my presentation. Yes, you need the, the Facebook app ID, Facebook app secret, which you obtain from the um, Facebook Messenger platform. Yeah, I can click it and I will get, a, let's say, step-by-step -step tutorial how to do it uh, from, from um, yeah, this uh, Facebook platform. And yeah, you, you need to provide this information, but also to the to face in Facebook, you need to use these callback URLs to set up the communication between Azure and Messenger. So every channel is different. Have, have every channel has their own uh, specifics. Yes. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, now, maybe I can mention the, the code because this is, uh, okay, yeah, sorry, maybe just the settings. 
and we can check the, the code. In, in settings, you saw that there was a app, bot app ID. This bot app ID is the Microsoft app ID that you will find on this configuration settings here. Yeah, it is value. Okay. So regarding uh, of the code, um, okay. Um, there are just yes, several files here. In, in this class, uh, I included the get product details. This is an, an intent from the Luis workspace. Uh, you will see it in a minute. Um, and also the important element is product. Okay, so these two are relevant for our scenario. The rest, uh, no, because they are, uh, this was based on the sample project that you get from, from Azure. When, when you go to the build, um, when, when you do the build uh, tab, you can download a bot source code and then start working on it. So yeah, I just added this part. Also in the dialogues, I created the product dialog. Um, this one is not relevant. Sorry. Here, it is uh, if the name was not provided by the user, uh, a prompt message appears to uh, ask for it. Uh, what product do you need? You, you saw this message. This message only appears if the name is not uh, provided. And all this workflow, all this communication is handled in this main dialog. In this main dialog, you can see, okay, um, you, you can see here the, the this is the communication with the database. This is uh, a web API service. Okay, let's extract the name. The name is okay, bicycle or all, and I just create a hero card, a list of card images. Sorry, list of card images uh, that you saw the, that the user can interact with it. Um, so yeah, I know it might be a lot of code, but uh, the documentation is quite useful or quite clear in, in this case. Um, but, but yeah, all the intelligence uh, from Luis uh, allows us to, to get this product name and also the intent. The, the intent is this uh, get product. So in the Luis um, website, you can see the model that I trained. And yeah, with, with this, I will also almost also finish the, the presentation. So here I have my application, yeah, this one, company. And my intent is uh, get product details. And here I provided several utterances, yes. Like, okay, can you give me any details about and product? And I mark, okay, this is a product. This is, a, this is an entity, or you could say it's a variable because, of course, maybe someone would ask about pens, others about bicycles, others about uh, iPhones, whatever. whatever. Um, but here you provide some examples, but of course, your users will speak or will mention something totally different. Yes, that is expected. Uh, you saw here that I even use uh, something. Can you give me any details? Uh, okay, yeah, well, it was the same, but <laughs> uh, you, usually you could, I would like to know about something. Yeah, here I don't exactly have that sentence. I would like to know about, but the structure or the intent was detected. So yeah, I provide examples. I train the model, I publish it and then it can be used by, by the bot. Yes, and maybe just, just finally. Um, of course, I also use a database uh, where all my uh, information is, is there. The, the products that, that you saw, they are here. One second. Yes, you see my four products. 
And for the images, they are stored in blob, uh, blob storage. These uh, links are uh, from, from blob storage. Okay, yeah, very quickly. <laughs> I will show you. From products, yes, all the images, for instance, the onion one is here. Good. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, you can integrate a lot of elements for your communication. You can simplify things for your users. So it's up to you. This is very powerful platform. And yeah. Mm. I hope this was uh, useful for you. So finally, maybe you can just uh, take a screenshot of this, uh, this slide and the next one. Um, there are some resources for you. If you are a developer, you can go to the Teams Dev Center. There is a support. If you have any questions, of course, you can also check the, the documentation. And there are a lot of um, yeah, guides or step-by-step -step Mm, tutorials that you can follow. And you can check the Office 365 roadmap for new uh, and interesting uh, stuff, not only about the platform, but also about the developing uh, of applications. There is a technical community, a Teams community that you can also visit. And there are also the Office 365 Champions program where you can set up a call with uh, Microsoft experts and peers uh, for sure. Some of the speakers from, from this event are there or are Office 365 champions. So yeah, that's up to you. And yeah, that would be the end of my presentation. Uh, don't forget that you can you could win an Oculus Quest uh, uh, all in one. Just visit the vendors booth sessions and watch the videos. Also, it's important to consider donating to the um, charity. They are doing a lot of um, important things in, in these um, days or these uh, important, um, important uh, things that are happening during, through the world. That will be the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please uh, uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, I will do my best to try to answer them. And yeah, also I will be happy to connect. You have my email, uh, LinkedIn and GitHub. I will share the slides on LinkedIn and also on my GitHub, the code, if you are interested in this application and project. Thank you very much. And yeah, I would like to know if there are any questions. Um, well, it seems that I don't have access to the chat, so sorry, but uh, okay, if you have um, any questions, please uh, send me an email and I will do my best to, to help you or maybe send me a tweet <laughs> and I will also be there. So yeah, sorry, I, I don't have access to the chat. But I hope that this presentation was useful for you. And um, yeah, you can create a lot of interesting uh, things for your users, for your teams, tenant or environment. So this was your sample project, but I hope it was interesting. So thank you very much and see you next time.